I'll cry because she has introduced the uh, different koshas. I'm going to go more in detail, much more in detail, to the level of scientists, the way scientists can understand. Okay, so uh, thank you, thank you for introducing the koshas. There's a more theoretical aspect of uh, the explanation. We are going to go deep into uh, the practical applications, how it can go as an anatomy physiology studies in medical schools. So that is what we are doing in our university. So just a brief introduction of uh, these different types of bodies we all have. When I learned about this uh, 30 years ago, it's all there, but how is it applicable? It's all in theory, it's all in scripture, it's all in the text. But can I get take it to the medical school? Can I understand? Can I choose a disease or other? Right? So I went to some people, uh, gurus, and they just recite the poem from Sanskrit. Or oh, Tamil, or whatever they are, as a scientist, and that's how I'm trained. So I want to go deep. I, have, I want to apply to the human body. So how can I do it? Well, some of them do answer. But the only, the only way I could get the answer was going through some Siddhas poems. Siddhas who wrote, who, who themselves applied these techniques and became diseaseless, they became ageless, some of them even became deathless. It's very difficult to believe. But most of the people from India, if you have a uh, connection there, if you're particularly interested, I'm sure you'll come up with a lot of names in that. So, how do we put into the uh, modern medicine, right? Regular allopathic medicine. That is the kind of research I've been doing for quite some time. And I once I understood the whole concept of how they were treating the human body, it blew my mind away. This is a separate science. This science has to be, this kind of science has to be spread to the world. Somebody has to initiate, somebody has to initiate so they can develop the power of features of future humanity, not only for medicine, the way they talked about, the way they did it, is also for the peace of the world, the peace of the world. So I'm going to restrict my, my talk only to this medicine, since I'm talking to medical school. All right, so. Again, former speaker has already disease. This is, is science perspective or the modern medical perspective. We always talk about a disease in a normal condition. With the structure and function of any organism, including animal, including plant, any organism. So diseases are often known to be medical conditions that are associated with symptoms and signs. Of course, most of the therapies try to stop the symptoms and signs instead of getting to the root of the problem. Root means real root, not the sugar or diagnostic level, but the why the sugar level increase? What did they take? Why did they take? Why did they did not take the medication? The root level, that's what I'm talking about. A disease may be caused by external factors like pathogens or internal dysfunctions. For example, internal dysfunctions of the immune system can produce a variety of different diseases including various forms of uh, immunodeficiency, hypersensitivity, allergies, and autoimmune diseases. So as a doctor, as a trained doctor, you all know uh, much more in detail more than me, right? not as a scientist. <clears throat> okay, this is again science perspective, old age, the aging process. We know, all of us know, aging really refers to uh, nearing and surpassing the life expense of human life, and it, that's almost like we thought about it. Think about, oh, I'm 75, I'm 80, it's only a few years left. Uh, things like that. You almost you think and imagine you're going to die. You're preparing all your documents and everything for the future generations. Old age also caused senescence in human beings, the final stage of the normal lifespan. So they are uh, Death becomes a final point. Death is the permanent cessation of all biological functions that sustains the living organism. Phenomena which commonly bring about death, including aging, predation, malnutrition, disease, suicide, homicide, starvation, and so on, with all injury trauma also injury. Okay, so commonly known perspective of death. 
where the modern signs are, um, they were common sense. Uh, yeah. okay. Now, we're going to look at the same thing in Siddha's perspective. Siddha's, again, I'll tell you a little more explanation. Who are those Siddha's? Uh, and who are they? And how they discovered all these different um, uh, types of discover what is the inside their own body. They always discover things from their own body and then they go. That is an experiment. Like what we do in the lab these days, they do within their themselves, their own mind, their own consciousness, and they do research and then come out things. So that's how they discover many other things. In fact, many other literature, many other scriptures, they came up like this research only. Now, uh, one of the Guru Maharishi says is a research in consciousness. There's a university in Iowa which is talking about um, conscious research. They're still doing it. So that's what Maharishis did. That's what our ancestors did. Most of the people, uh, Rishis and Siddhas. So Siddhas are one of those uh, inspired uh, people uh, in the olden days who are scientists. They are real scientists. They all get together in the forest sometimes. They talk about what they discovered inside their consciousness. They verify with all the other saints. And then they go, how we can use this for the humanity. Of course, they are the, like doctors and consultants with no fees. No fees. <laughs> they all they want help people. They don't care. They just want help people. So, only thing I, I can say, for those of you doctors, please be compassionate. Find out somewhere where you get the compassion. That will make you a very good doctor. It's not going after how much I'm going to make. What kind of hospital, what big name hospital is going to be. So, anyways, so compassion is one of the important things. Uh, the, these people, the Siddhas, uh, have developed during their research in their internal discovery. <clears throat> Alright, what do they think about disease? Disease happens when there is an imbalance of body humors. We call that humors or koshas. Right? Humors in the body, vata, vata in the other room, I think she just touched vata, pita, kapha. Uh, Sandy also talked a little bit on the Vata Kappa because that's the basis of Ayurvedic medicine. In Siddha, Ayurvedic and Siddha medicine, they are very close, but they are not the same. Ayurvedic medicine is very popular in the West. People talk about anything, they talk about yoga, they always talk about Ayurvedic medicine. There is a concept in India called Siddha medicine too. It's a little different. That is why when she talked about kosha, I introduced the koshas, is a very good platform for me to introduce the Siddha's concept, how they really apply this concept in real life and achieve what they wanted to, using the same concept. So that's what you can see. <clears throat> so, disease happened because of imbalance of the body, humerus, vata, the air element, pitta, the fire element, and kapha, the water element, which you all have, all of us know, we have it in the body, there's no doubt about it, there's no question about it. So this can happen by external or internal factors. During this little cold, Humid, you start coughing. Right? External factors. So things like that. You get infected, then you have a um, cold problem. You, know, you start sneezing. Right? So that's uh, internal external factors. So if you balance these humors, one can avoid the disease completely. There is a discovery. The discovery is diseases can be avoided from the human body. It's a greatest discovery, which is baffling to to me, as a biomedical scientist, I'm sure to the doctor also. But there's a possibility that possibility does exist. This is what I found out when I went deep into for the past 20 or 30 years, when I went deep into the literature of all these saints, of all these rishis and siddhas, I found out, yes, it is possible to live without disease. Amazing. The old age. How does old age is being seen by siddhas? According to Siddhas, again, whenever you see Siddhas, please take the spiritual scientists or Rishis. They are actually spiritual scientists. Those who did some research in consciousness themselves. Spiritual scientists, not science, modern scientists, spiritual scientists. According to Siddhas, if diseases are avoided to the human body, if diseases are avoided to the human body, then old age can be delayed or even they can be avoided. There are people who are still living like a 16 year old boy living for 18 years. There are evidences. You can go into the literature, you can find out, you can Google and find out too. It's still there. A little beyond our conception. This is beyond our modern medicine. Okay? So, therefore, maintenance of the 
body without any disease by various prevention methods. So they focus more on the prevention methods, prevention of the diseases. Prevention methods can delay, underline, even avoid aging, even avoid the aging process. Our human body is capable of all this. That's what they discovered. Death. Come to think. Death, if human body, what kind of logic they have, since they did our research on their own, they found out if human body can be maintained without disease, it can maintain without disease, old age, and death can be delayed. It can be for a long time. You can live normal ways with us, say, if you don't do anything, just like eating healthy, think right way, do the two things right way, you can live 120 years. How many of you live 120 years? Okay? So there's some modification, we have something, some problem in uh, the food, the way we think, the way we live. Anyway, this thing, this last part, death can be delayed, avoided. That is where I got the tickling. Scientists, biomedical scientists. Is that possible? What does it really mean? Does it really exist? So I had to do quietly, I had to withdraw myself from modern science for some time, <coughs> take all the scriptures, read. Since I'm fortunate to speak the same kind of language, what they wrote in the scriptures, so I went to some pandits, to learn a little more of grammatical language, the way this does write the poems, understood, put the same thing, practice myself, and see the changes. Okay? So this is the result of uh, my um, findings.